Believe in Everything Auburn is brought to you by Bet Online. It is down to the final four teams, and Bet Online has been your tournament bracket headquarters all March long. And now that we're almost down to the finals, we've still got more in store. MLB is here, NBA, NHL playoffs are around the corner. And as always, Bet Online is the number one source for your summer sports wagering. So head to Bet Online today to stay updated on all the action and remember to use promo code believe for a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. That is B L E A V. Bet Online. The game starts here. War Eagle everybody. Welcome back to Believe in Everything Auburn. Taylor Davis, Jason Campbell. We welcome you in on this lovely spring day. Plenty to talk about. But more exciting than what we're going to say in the next 10 minutes, we have a guest joining us at the end of the episode. And it's one that we don't know a ton about as of yet. And so this interview is awesome to get a little insight into a young guy who is making his name known around Auburn already. Defensive lineman TJ Lindsay is going to join us at the end, talk all about his transition to college life and his expectations for this team come fall. So you want to stick around for that. I welcome in Jay Cam, who certainly gets the opportunity to know these guys beyond football because of your involvement in the NIL collective and some of the initial conversations that you're having with them. And you mentioned, you know, a guy like TJ Lindsay being a hard worker, being a competitor, a high character guy, which uh, this coaching staff has put an emphasis on, and clearly this program, and I would even say college football in general, really needs. So pretty cool to kind of get a peek behind the curtain on a guy like that. Yeah, they, like, he's a, he's an Auburn guy. Like yeah. I know Auburn guys when I see him, when I'm talking to him, and you know you're around them. Like you kind of know who fits the program, and you kind of know like uh, I don't know if this guy's going to make it. Sure. And then kind of know I don't think this is the place for this guy. You know, so you know these things based off of conversation, and right. but you can't say it. You know, what I'm saying, but when you talk to TJ, like you know, TJ is an Auburn guy. TJ reminds me so much of Keldrick Fault when I talk yeah. to Keldrick. Is they have similar character. They're very similar in their approach to the game, their approach to to life. They're both hard workers. Yeah, and you know, ironically, having both of them probably with this week and the next week. So, <laughs> I'll show you like. This program is headed in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, we're getting the right type of guys now that fits this program. And they care. You know, they not just want to be here. They don't want to just make NIL money. Like, they want to put a stamp on the program. Right. And they want to leave a great legacy. And that's the type of guys we're trying to look for. And TJ definitely fits that mode. I love it. I love it. And you don't necessarily know what you're going to get from a guy who left high school early. He's an early enrollee. He moved to Auburn to be there for the spring semester, but he's 18 years old. He was a four-star defensive lineman, so obviously he was highly touted. I know Texas was up there. Texas A&M was up there. Like He had a lot of high caliber offers, so you know he was getting all the attention and accolades, and at 18 years old, how does that affect your character? How does that affect how you interact with people and how you view yourself? And I was so impressed. First of all, he seems older than 18. He looks it also. He looks like a grown man, but he carries himself with a demeanor that doesn't strike me as an 18-year-old who left high school early and has probably gotten a lot of attention in the last year. He spoke so openly about wanting to work hard and wanting to compete. And he gave a lot of high praise for his teammates. So really exciting stuff. Make sure you stick around for that. We'll get to that in just a few minutes. But we got to talk about the biggest news of the sports world that transpired this week. And that is women's basketball. And that is not a sentence you say a lot, but it is true. Iowa, LSU lived up to the hype. Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark, all the marbles. I hate that it was the Elite Eight and not the championship. You know what I mean? It felt like a championship. Right, right. But the highest viewership of wow. any women's game, higher viewership than any regular season college football game except Ohio State, Michigan last season. Incredible numbers. 12.3 million people tuned in to view this. So if you are an advocate for women's sports, if you are a fan of women's sports, this is a step in the right direction. But 
women, men, I don't freaking give a dang. It was incredibly entertaining television. And as just a sports fan, it lived up to the hype. Tell me, Jay, give me all your thoughts. I've been watching women's basketball for the last two years, probably just as much as I've been watching men's basketball. And the reason why women seem to play more of a team game. Yeah. Men seem to play more of individual game where someone wants to be the star, someone wants to be the guy and everything. And they can get caught standing around while one guy's trying to go one on one. Women are mostly moving around. The ball is moving. You know, you can learn a lot by watching a women's game if you're a basketball player. You've Uh, always said that. You can learn a lot about the game. It's a lot of teaching tape there. Yeah. And it's time. It's time that the women deserve the viewership and the support that they're getting. You know, the game has been going on for a long time. And it's sad that it took someone like a Caitlin Clark to look like a Steph Curry shooting a three from so far. Which let's be honest, Steph is the one that kind of started three point thing, and basketball is probably why Caitlin started shooting so many threes coming right. out of high school. But you're seeing so many kids now do that, so both of them has changed the game. Like Steph changed the way people watch the NBA because of the three point game, which you That's see the AAU basketball tournament. Because I used to coach AAU basketball a couple of years ago, all these kids want to shoot threes, even yeah. at eight years old. And I'm like, dude, scoot up, you're not strong enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now what happens? Caitlin Clark, the last two years, has just taken a game by storm. Yeah. You go to AAU basketball, you watch high school basketball games, women basketball games. Everyone's trying to wear that number 22. Mm-hmm. Everyone's trying to cross over and hit the step back three. They're not even trying to shoot close to the three point line. They're trying to shoot four feet behind the three point line because that's where she shoots, is yep. four feet behind the three point line. So they're influencing the power of the game. She's going to be one of the ones that's going to help change the WNBA salary. Uh, yeah. It, ironically, everything times up, right? This year, she's going to, however they finish out the Final Four, she gets drafted first pick overall. Her season starts in the NBA, WNBA in the summer. This is their last year in that TV contract. So the number's going to be stupid with people going to her games, going to support the WNBA. You know, because there's other women coming out this year that's going to be solid as well. So now you'll have right. all the support. And now the numbers go up. You take that 12 million viewership in the WNBA TV contract. Now that plays into their CBA agreement next. Do you think that that viewership will translate to the WNBA, though? Or do you think a lot of it is tied to school fandom? A lot of those type of school fans, you look at like the South Carolinas, the LSUs, the yeah. Iowa, Ohio States, you know, all these women basketball teams, they're packed out games. That's you what know? I'm saying. Yeah. So you wonder, I think the stardom follows Caitlin because she's going to be in all the commercials. She's an state. anomaly. Yeah. So the more she's in the commercials and the more that they're putting eyes on her, if she's doing this in the WA, WNBA, shooting these type of threes, People oh, you're start. Yeah, people will watch at that standpoint. But I, I get what you're saying because we've seen a lot of great girls come out of college and go to WMA, and we never hear anything else about them. Right. You know, it's not like we're we're because the TV, they're not. They got to come up with a better TV deal and do more screaming their games for everybody to be able to get involved with it and start watching. If you don't pick it back off, what's going on now? If you're the WNBA commissioner, I don't know when you ever will. Because 100%. It's at its highest right now. It's at the highest it's ever been. Uh-huh. When you see with Emma Lobo and all those great girls that played at UConn back in the day, Lawson that played at Tennessee, all these people that's involved in this game, and now everyone is pushing the game forward. If you're the WNBA commissioner, if you don't capitalize on this, they may need another WNBA commissioner because so true. this is the time to raise the women's salary. The highest they make in the WNBA is $252,000. Like, that's the highest. That's why they have to go overseas and play. We shouldn't have to send our women overseas to yeah. make income when they're impacting the game. I understand you got to have the viewership and everything. That's what pays yeah. the shit. NFL players make so much. NBA because the viewership is there. You got in the, you get in viewership now. So can we just improve their salaries more than what it is? But this has been phenomenal, Taylor, watching these games. I'm excited to watch this weekend. No one even talks about Paige in the more the place for UConn. I like, know. She, her whole career injuries have hurt her during this time, but she's healthy now. Yep. And 
They're playing shorthanded, and this girl can ball. So yeah, I'm can. looking forward to seeing Paige and Caitlin, and and not just those two, but the teams. I'm looking forward to seeing. I'm looking forward to seeing is South Carolina. Are they going to close the deal this year? Last year they went undefeated, lost in the semifinals. You know, can they close the deal this year? NC State men's and women is in the final four. UConn men is in the final four. Yeah. Uh, and in state men and women both were three seed. So mm-hmm. you know it's just about getting on the run. That's why we always say I thought Auburn could have made it to the final four this year. Yeah. Because when I looked at the men's final four, nobody scares me. You know, Tennessee easily could have been in there. Bama's in ah, there. that game. You, know, uh, you could have had two SEC teams in the final four after we stunk it up starting off the tournament. And we ended up with two teams in there. So it's been a fun March Madness. It didn't start off as fun, but it's really gotten fun the last couple of weeks. I hate it for Houston, though, losing their point guard early. Yeah. That's like that, that's that's crushing, man. Right. But I'm glad that Taylor's been paying attention to the all the games now because she's been so busy. She's been gymnastics, she's been well, it was basketball, SEC tournament. So it's Literally. been hard. I'm glad you got a chance to grab some popcorn and get on the couch and see some. Yes. Games. Absolute cinema. Couldn't agree anymore. I-, I think your point about the WNBA is really interesting because, you know, we talk about with even football, the decision of going pro versus staying collegiate. And for a lot of these guys, it- it's kind of even like the amount of money I'm going to make in NIL versus if I go and I'm a fourth round pick in the draft this year the way women's basketball sits right now an angel reese is going to make way more at lsu than she will if she goes to the wnba right now so i honestly think that you're more inclined to stay in collegiate ball as long as you can until the tides turn for the wnba and so from a business model perspective from a marketing perspective You have to, to your point, capitalize on the momentum that has been built on the collegiate side. Because what I do think helps build fandom is building stars. If you become a fan of a person, of a player, of a story, you want to see that through wherever it takes them. So for Caitlin Clark, she has been such an anomaly and such a difference maker that I do think there will be people inclined to see that story lived out wherever it takes her. And if that is in the WNBA very soon, they are going to follow, but you got to capitalize on that for everybody. This should be the pinnacle. So I'm hopeful that they carry that on. I think Caitlin decision to come out because everybody's like, man, why would you come out? You're going to make way more while you're in college. Her decision to come out, I think is being pushed by some women in the WNBA being pushed. They've got to have something ready for her. Hey, hey, our TV contract is up this year. If you stay in college another year, by the time you get to the WNBA, that salary will still be $252,000 max. But if you come in this year, our last year on TV deal, our TV numbers go through the roof this summer. Mm -hmm. Now we sign a new CBA, and now you're helping all the WNBA women make more money. So I think it definitely was a bigger push for her to go to the WNBA. And she's still going to have the commercials, I'm pretty sure. All the sponsorships and everything is going to follow her to the WNBA. Now, for Angel Reese, I honestly think Angel should stay in college. Me too. Year, Because her, even though she's big from a phantom standpoint, people looking at her and everything, it's not as big as what Caitlyn's doing. You right. know, so, so I think it benefits her because she doesn't have the state form commercials, the Gatorade commercials, all those commercials. So... For her to come back next year, she'll be probably one of the faces. The biggest of names, yes. Biggest names in the college basketball. So she made yeah. one point eight million this year, or something in NIL. But she'll probably make two million next year because she'll be one of the biggest names. So if I'm her, if I'm not a, a top two pick, I still might not go. But Caitlin Clark, it makes sense for her to go. I Angel, I probably stay. I totally agree with you, Jay. As far as the men's bracket goes, my champion is still alive, but my other three are no more. But the final four ending up being NC State, Purdue, and UConn, Alabama. Thoughts on the final four, prediction for the championship, and the victor? I know it's hard for us to say, you know, anything about Bama, but. Let's face it, they play ball. Like they've they, had a they, great they tournament run. They, they've, had, they've had a really good tournament run. 
what they didn't do well during the regular season, which they didn't play defense. They just try to outscore everybody. They yep. start playing defense. Uh, Sears handling the ball. You could tell it, it's so important to have a veteran, God, veteran. He's been great. Guard that can shoot and can know how to deliver the ball. And, you know, Nelson, that kid has been playing, you know, out of his mind the last couple of games. So as much as we are against them from a rival standpoint, they've showed up and represented the SEC well in this time. I agree. Um, you know, even Tennessee did Purdue. You know, it was going down to the wire. That was you a know, great it, game. It was a really good game. You know, the stars showed up. And yeah. then you think about NC State, the big guy down low, like, you know, he's been – he's made himself some money this tournament. You know, Has he's already been selling ATM machines, you know. <laughs> he's trying to sell double ATM machines now. Yeah. But, you know, you think about UConn. UConn is probably the most put-together team out of the four that's left. I would agree. And they haven't been a lot of noise around them. Everyone knows they're good, they're a special team, but it hasn't been the noise that has been around NC State. It's been around Alabama. It's been around uh, Purdue. Purdue, yeah. big as Achilles Hill, was getting out of the first round. Every time they had a great team, they got thumped in the first round. Once they got past the first round, it's almost like another antenna went off where they was just like, oh, we're confident now. And yeah. they've been playing that way. The big guy down low, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, like, dude, you know, to be that big. He's 7'4". Right, 7'4". And he can shoot free throws. Yes. So, game of basketball is just expanding and yeah. this is going to be an interesting tournament i got purdue picked to win it all in one of my brackets houston was my other bracket yeah and i still think houston would have been there had not been for the injury to their point guard but you know this is an interesting tournament taylor because it's the team the four teams that are left what do they do very well they play team basketball Mm -hmm. And the four teams that's left in the women's game, even though Caitlin drops 40, the other two girls had 21 and 18. Yeah, that's so true. So who do you think comes out of the men's final four? Purdue <laughs> against? Purdue against UConn. I'm going UConn as well. And that's my thing is like UConn, UConn doesn't look – like they skip a beat, really. And like Alabama, we know they they can fall apart. They can have a bad game. They did it in the SEC tournament. UConn's a well oiled machine consistently. And Purdue has a twin tower under <laughs> the basket at all times. Like there's only so much you can do with a seven four. Did you see when they cut down the nets after the Elite Eight? He didn't get on the ladder. All right, he just stood. He up just there. stood. <laughs> like, that enough said. Enough said. Oh, like Tennessee, bless yeah. their heart, they did absolutely everything that they could do. They had multiple guys yeah. foul out because, like, what do you do with a situation like that? Yeah, like I said, Tennessee was on their way, but I think UConn is going to pull a. Uh, we're going to run the big guy. As soon as they score, they're sprinting the ball down the court, trying to lay it up. Pretty much what Iowa did to LSU in the second half. Yeah, they came out of the second half with a totally different brand of basketball. Where as soon as LSU scored, somebody was inbounding the ball, and I was pushing, laying the ball up. So what you do with that? You take their biggest stars out of the game, especially the big down low post people, where they can't get up and down the court fast enough. So when you slow it down to a half court game, you actually help the the bigger guys and the yeah. bigger women. But you push the ball down the court, and you're a smaller team which is UConn is smaller than Purdue, they're going to be pushing that ball as fast as they can if they meet in the finals. Bama, okay. Bama already pushes the ball. So that's why I say UConn, it would have been a better matchup for Bama to play Purdue than, huh. than to open up playing UConn because now UConn can run with Bama. Bama wants to yeah. get you running and shooting. Yes. UConn can do that. Yep. So it's going to be an interesting Final Four on both sides. You know, It's going to be a popcorn weekend. I know. Uh, I'm and, so excited. Uh, well, adding to the popcorn weekend is a day, which happens on Saturday. So as excited as everyone is for the final four, make sure you tune in to the incredible radio broadcast. Forget the TV <laughs> radio broadcast with my guy, J cam, uh, a day happening on Saturday. We've said it 50 million times, but I will repeat myself. You can't take a ton away from a day. It is a watered down version of, 
of team, of plays, of scheme, you name it. But if there are some guys for fans to keep an eye on, if there are some aspects that we could take away from this exhibition of sorts, give them a few to keep their eye on this weekend. First of all, we, we say get your popcorn ready, but don't put too much butter in your popcorn for this spring game. You know, just put, just go get that. Save that for the cal- final four. Get the hundred calorie popcorn, <laughs> skinny pop. Yeah, skinny pop. You know, for the spring game, don't 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 go invest too much money into some movie butter popcorn. Nah. So, you know, that's first and foremost. Second, everyone want to watch Cam Coleman. Uh, I've heard the receiver rooms kind of beat up. I know a lot of people want to see a lot of the new receivers. So that's one group everyone's going to be looking for forward yep. to. Um, I would probably say the next group, you know, Jalen Crawford is a guy, uh, you know, Champ Anthony is a guy to keep an eye on. Okay. Uh, you know, TJ is probably going to talk a little bit about Prince, uh, the big tackle that came over from Mississippi State, six seven, big dude, you know, like, uh, you know, everyone wants to see what the offensive line going to look like, you know, but everyone's already looking and we already know everyone's watching number one. Yeah. <laughs> My clarity and how much Peyton has grasped and how much more the offense he's gotten under his belt since he's now had a whole offseason to be here compared to last year. He came in, in the summer and everyone wants to see what the young pups are. How does Walker White look as a true freshman? Uh, how, yeah. does Hank, how does Hank Brown carry a momentum from the bowl game? Is Holden Gurner going to look a part to stay or will you see at the spring game it's time for him to transfer? You know, so a lot of things are going to happen the next week uh, because the transfer portal opens up. So most guys that probably didn't see themselves in the top two of the depth chart probably try to test the waters. Um, right. Others that are in the top two of the depth chart, you know, I'm not sure, you know, Auburn's really going to add too many pieces. I think they have enough of their, their foundation that they need, but everyone's going to see how does the ball come out of Peyton's hand? What's his connection? But we also got to remember Perry Thompson's not here yet, but he will be. In the summer, and everyone wants to see Robert Lewis, the uh, transfer yeah. from Georgia State, uh, the receiver. He's a speedster. So I, that's what I want to see. I want to see pass and attack precise. What I mean by that is, does the ball come out on time? Is it accurate enough to let – you don't have to be so point that you're accurate, accurate now because you got big receivers. Right. I just like – is the ball in the vicinity for Cam Coleman, those guys, to make ridiculous catches that we know they can make? Yes, 100%. I'm excited. And the new tight end, what's his name? Oh, yeah, new tight end. Um, gosh, why did I just go? Brain it's kind forward? of a weird name, and we've already got Rivaldo, so I get confused. Transfer from Maryland. Yes. Uh, dad played at Auburn. Why did I just go blank with that? But, I don't know, yes. but I'm excited to see him as well. <laughs> anyway, so A-Day happening this Saturday. Final Fours happening this weekend. It is also regionals for gymnastics, so whoever comes out of this weekend will find themselves in Fort Worth two weeks later for the national championship. So there's a lot going on. Baseball as well. I promise I'll start watching baseball, okay? (laughs) One thing at a time. Um, But we are going to go ahead and head to the TJ Lindsay interview again. Uh, Thank you so much for listening and following along. As always, you can subscribe if you haven't already. You'll get a notification every time we release an episode. You can find us on YouTube where we do a video every single week, Believe's YouTube channel. And come on back next week for potentially another exciting guest. You won't want to miss it. But without further ado, TJ Lindsay. Rico Walker was his name, everybody. Rico Walker. I'm so sorry, Rico. <laughs> okay, here's TJ. Right. Look, I am so excited to get to talk to you a little bit, just to get to know you more. There's a lot of excitement around this team and specifically the new guys joining into this program. And I know y'all have to have a lot of pride for that excitement around your class. Talk to me a little bit about the last few months. Like I said, you're an early enrollee. You're participating in spring ball right now. Uh, what's it been like for you, you know, moving to the Plains and and getting going with this team? Uh, it's been a great experience for me. I think it's been a great experience for everybody, really. Um, everybody loves it here. Uh, I just like the town. I mean, like the people, yeah. they made the, the living here. Like just way better. Like I just like living here. It kind of reminds me of like uh, where I grew up. 
Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a really good, uh, really good, like friendly town. You know what I mean, like everybody's nice. Everybody knows who we are. Like I go everywhere and like I get recognized all the time, you know. And um, they're nice and a lot of kids like they like to talk to us and stuff like that. Um, I mean, the process of living here has been great. Uh, I feel like that's what stands out with us, with everybody. Like all the visits I went on, like this is more of a more of a family place, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then like the coaches, they've made it easy too. Like, you know, they coach us hard and all that, but they care about us though, you can tell. TJ, so you was from Arkansas mm-hmm. and then you played at IMG Academy and you also got some high accolades as a basketball player. So, you know what they say about defensive linemen that can play basketball, you know? Mm-hmm. You know so talk a little bit about you know, IMG, how I prepared you for for Auburn, but also just talk about, you know, you playing two positions this year pretty much. And, you know, how where did basketball come from? What position did you play in basketball? I'm just very interested. Yeah. Um, IMG, IMG was um my last year, my last senior year, you know, I decided to go there. Um, they helped me a lot, especially in the the lifestyle wise, like living on my own, like really having to make your own decisions, you know, like it's different when you finally get it, you know, everybody wants it until, uh, until you get it, you know, and, and I'm glad I did cause I'm more of an independent person, but it's definitely different though. Like, you know, everything's on you, um, going to, going to class, um, what, like eating, you know, like just doing the right thing, like, and that's all on you. And, um, you know, you can skip it and, and face the consequences or, you know, not, um, it's the first time in my life I had that. And, um, it really prepared me here cause it's like the same, same exact lifestyle, you know, living on my own. And that really wasn't a shock to me, like how it was when I went to IMG. It was kind of a shock. I was like, you know, I wasn't ready for that for a little bit. You know, I, I definitely uh, got accustomed to it, but it's just different once it really happens, you know. And then right. um, development-wise, I wasn't there for too long, but they definitely helped me see a lot of stuff. Like a lot of stuff I'm learning here is the same stuff I learned there. And I, I credit that to some of my old high school I went to as well. We were a really good team, and they taught me a lot like that. Um, and then basketball – I grew up in a basketball family. Like I'm the only one that played football. Um, my dad is actually bigger than me. He's like six six, uh, six seven, somewhere around there. Like yeah. a really big dude. Um, he was athletic. Apparently, he was windmilling and all that. You know, I didn't get all that. <laughs> but um, he he used to play football um, and basketball up until like his ninth, tenth grade year or something like that. And then he quit playing football. He said it's the biggest mistake he ever had. Um, wow. He was really good at basketball, though. I think he played for a little bit at Samford in uh, Alabama. Uh-huh. Um, he was really good. They won a national championship, I believe, in 1992. So, like, they were a really good team. Nice. <clears throat> Out of Arkansas, yep, yeah, at Parkview. Um, and then my brothers, I have two older brothers. They both hoop. So, like, you know, when I was a kid, all you want to do is what your brothers do, you know. <laughs> and uh, my whole family, all they did was hoop. So, that's really all we did. And it's crazy because one of my older brothers is really good at football. He quit, too. Wow. Uh, to play basketball and you know my dad he told me when i was uh around like seventh grade you know i had the same plans he told me he's like nah you're gonna be the you're gonna be the one that finally sticks to it he's like i made too many mistakes <laughs> letting everybody just quit to hoop <clears throat> um but no nah, i was definitely uh i was pretty good you know i think i definitely chose a path that i can go further in but i think i would have been good in basketball too probably a little lower d1 um it's just what did i play in and basketball, I played everything from the three to the five. I was never like a two to a two to one, but like I could play a three to the five. I could definitely guard every position though. So you makes me think of the guy from North Carolina State, Taylor, the the big dude down low. Yeah. Oh yeah. Play. We all yeah, know about so, him now. Yeah. Back, oh, yeah. back when I was hooping, I was I wasn't that big. I was big though. I was like two thirty, and like in basketball, that's like huge. Yeah, huge. Like you know, <laughs> um, I could guard every position. It was great. Uh, I you know I spread the floor. I was a really good passer actually. Man, he can do it all. And yes. clearly your athleticism has brought you to Auburn in a role that, um, like I said at the beginning, there are expectations with it. But I'm curious from your perspective, a highly touted kid, four star coming in, you had a lot of SEC offers. You had a lot of offers in general, but specifically in the SEC, which as we believe here is the highest level of college ball. So when you are having those early conversations with Auburn coaching staff, what was your impression of what you could do at Auburn? What were they telling you in those situations? Like, Hey, here's where we are. Here's where we see your fit to the point that you decided to choose Auburn. Yeah. Um, Auburn 
Well, when they initially offered me, I really didn't. Um, I really was like, you know, I didn't know too much about Auburn. I knew who they were, obviously, but I didn't really know. Yeah. Um, I got at first I couldn't see it. Uh, but then like you know I came, I started talking to the coaches and um, to a lot of just the people around the building, and I, I just really like the feeling. Like you know, when you come here, it's completely different from what you think it would be. Yeah. It's not like you know you think of Alabama, you kind of think of like the country, but it's not like that. It's like you know, it's like a nice town, a nice city. Um. And I mean, a lot of the things they were telling me is like, you know, Auburn, everybody knew like when Cam Newton and them were here, like they were always really good, you know, totally. like it was um, until recently. And they, they want to bring that back. And, you know, Coach Freeze, um, I know he's a really good coach back when he was an old Miss and Liberty. Like, you know, I've always known about him. Um, so he had talked to me um, at the time. Coach Garrett was there. He was talking to me. He was like, you know, it's wide open. Um, I know Keltrick was here. He was a really good player they had. And I mean, I saw what he did this year. Uh, last year, you know, and um, they they were reminding me that, like you know it's 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 open um right now, you know I think we're on the come up. I definitely think we're about to be one of the best teams coming up here soon. Um, and, you know it's it's wide open and the people that want it, you know what I mean like a lot of us freshmen we really want it and we're really here to work. Yeah. And um, they just told me that if I come in here and put in the work, you know what I'm saying they see me playing early and and leaving early, you know hopefully. Yeah. Um, and that and then the development wise, just the people they have here, I was really comfortable with being here. Yeah, TJ, you talk about all the things. The uh, I remember when I came to Auburn, it's a similar way. Uh, you know, I heard a lot about it. You know, saw him play on TV. My brother played six years before me in the SEC at Mississippi State. So I kind of knew a lot about the SEC. And uh, it took me a few times, but the more I kept coming, the more family oriented, it just felt differently than any other university that I went to. And ultimately, that ended up being my decision, you know, why I chose to come to Auburn. Uh, you're coming in with a really good class. You know, you guys finished top 10 uh, nationally the year before. They finished number 12. This year's class is shaping up to be a top five or six class. Just talk about the guys you came in with, like, as a class. Like, what are your what are your guys, what are your goals uh, to, to that you guys want to achieve? Yeah, um, the guys that came in as class, like I said, we like to work. I can see that from day one, you know what I mean, when we started just the team runs and the lifts, you know what I mean? Um, I think everybody can attest to that. And we compete, too especially in spring ball. Like I see a lot of us out there playing and competing, you know, um, we might not have like some of us might be lacking some, but it, it don't matter to us, honestly. And our goal is really is to take over within the next three years, two years, you know, um, I think we'll be really good this year for sure. And then the next year, you know, the sky's the limit, honestly. Um, Cause we have a lot of good older people here this year. And then like us, you know, young fire, we want to get in it. Um, but just a lot of people have, uh, have stood out in their position groups, I would say. Um, even though we're young, you know, it doesn't matter. I think that we've shown out. You mentioned spring ball, and I would love to hear more about kind of how the coaches have cultivated that environment for you guys, how, like you said, the competition aspect of it, and you're just a few days away from A-Day, and while it is a smaller sample, getting to go out into Jordan-Hare in front of fans is always exciting. So just kind of walk us through what spring practice has been like thus far and what you're looking forward to about A-Day. Uh, spring practice has been really good for me um, and just the team in general. Like, you know, Coach Freeze even told us he thinks our passion and our effort has been 100. You know, awesome. like, um, and I agree, too. It's, it's been really competitive. You know, there's been days where we've got the offense. There's been days that they got us. It's been There's a lot of days where it's even. Like, we're just going at each other, you know. And that's really, that's really <laughs> what you want at winning teams, you know. Um, and it's just been really good. I feel like everybody has gotten a lot better. That's, yeah. And that's really what spring is about, you know. Um it's been even, you know, like the rep count and all of that. And um, and the people who want it, you can definitely tell. And, I mean, there's not a lot of people out there who just don't want it. I think a lot of the team is really bought in. Yeah. Um, and that, and that's I think we're, like, really on want to be better and, like, want it for ourselves, you know, and want to make Auburn good again. Um, everybody listens. Everybody's really coachable. We don't really have any drama. Like, you know, right. we're all coming together. I think it's great. Um and then a day, you know, I'm re I'm really looking forward to going to Jordan Hare, you know, and I, I know it's not the the game day game day experience, but but they said we're supposed to have one of the best ones, you know what I mean? And, yeah. Um, I think the spring game is going to be really good and really interesting. So we'll Love see it. how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I always wonder with the format of spring games, you know, I yeah. mean, we played it was, you know, starters to play a little bit, but then all of a sudden, you know, everyone else they try to get the younger guys a lot of reps in front of the crowd and yeah, try to see how they can react. Uh, you know, with people watching. So we didn't get a chance to play too long in the spring games, but there was always a scrimmage. 
And the scrimmage for us always came the Monday after the Saturday spring game. I'm, I think for y'all, that may be y'all last day. I'm not sure if y'all have another day after spring. But for us, they always kept a day afterwards. So on Monday, with closed doors, it was ones versus ones going at it. Wow. And, you know, it was very competitive and everything. But looking forward, you know, because Coach Garrett recruited you and, and and helped get you to Auburn and everything. And then, you know, you have to see him leave and he went to Jacksonville. And then Coach Vontrell stepped in. Talk about the role. I know you guys were excited that Vontrell got bumped up to the job because he was helping Coach Garrett uh, last year. Uh, but just from being in that room, how has Bunch, Coach Vontrell been with you guys? Uh, Coach Montreux, he he been cool, man. Like uh, he's been, you know, what I'm saying like it's way deeper in football with him. He was like that in my recruiting process. You know, he's just somebody I can talk to. Um, yeah. I think, and I and then on top of that, I really think he deserved it. Like he's a really good yeah. coach. You know, um, I think if we didn't get him this year, you know, what I mean, he might have left soon because somebody was somebody was definitely gonna get him. Mm-hmm. Um, and he deserves it, man. Like he puts in the work and he gives us great feedback, great technique. He's really passionate. You can tell he cares about you. You know what I mean? Um, he treats you like you deserve to be treated. You know. Um, you know, like young man, he's never disrespectful and he's always just 100 with us. And that's really all you can ask from a coach. He's uh, stepped into the role really well, I feel like, you know, um, the times where I am playing D tackle and I'm in that room. Um, I mean, he's he's done great with me. You know, it's not a position I've played a lot, but I definitely can play it. And he, he's echoed that to me. He thinks I can be really great at it, you know. And um, he's just been really good from what I can tell so far. And everybody on the team loves him, even if you're not a D lineman, like every position does. He talks to everybody, has good relationships with everybody. He's just really good people. That's awesome. You obviously get the best vantage point possible being in there, the practices and and whatnot. From a defensive perspective, who's been wreaking havoc offensively? Who have you guys as a defense been like, man, this guy is a pain when he's out there? I would definitely say Cam Coleman. He's has been to be, right? He's legit. Nah, he's legit. All that, <laughs> all the hype. He, he's, yeah, he got it. He's gonna be an NFL talent for sure. He's a, he's probably like the best athlete I've ever seen. Really? Yeah. And and I played with some good athletes, especially the IMG. Like I know you did. His uh, his athleticism is crazy. Like he saw one of the best catches I've ever seen, like in person in my life. It was last mm-hmm. week too. He um he caught a back shoulder no not a back shoulder he caught a a, a back of the end zone catch behind the defender's back like it was on his back and he caught it drug his toes I ain't never seen that in person but he he's definitely one of them ones. Dang. Yeah, I think this team is shaping up to be playing a lot of young freshmen this Me year. Me too. You know, yeah. it's, it's self Cam and you know you got Bryce Kane, you got Solomon, you got Pierre Thompson coming in. Like you guys are loaded, man. As mm-hmm. far as you know. Jalen Crawford has been making some noise at the cornerback position uh, as a young pup as well. So, you know, this class is going to be deep, and you guys are going to play, play big roles this year. Defensively, other than yourself, who is someone that's standing out on film? When you watch, you be like, man, this guy here just, like, lights out. Like, just – he's a football player. Like, who, who's that guy for us? Um, for- uh, I could say a couple people. For me, it'll really be Keldrick. When I watch Keldrick, you know, he's he's um above me right now, my position. I mean, he is like he's some he's some special too. Uh, yeah. Definitely one of the best football players I've ever seen. Like he makes so many plays. Just how smart he is, how athletic he is. He disrupts so many things. Um, when he's on, like you know, and he's always on. Like he's always there and attentive. But like when he's clicking and he's on his A game, yeah. it's tough to stop him, man. Um, I like when I watch film, I always watch his film too. Um, Cause I mean that's what I need to learn from, and um, he's been so great too. Like we're giving out advice. You know what I'm saying it's it's a it's a competition, but it's a competition that makes us better. You know what I mean? And we mm-hmm. know that. Um, and, you know, you want multiple good people like Amaris. Amaris is another freshman. I mean, he's been doing really good. You know what I mean? Like me and him learning from him. Um, other people that I say stand out all the time is definitely Eugene. I mean, he plays with so much passion, and like he's always <laughs> doing the right thing. Like he's just a really great leader. Like he's a natural leader. You know what I mean? Like not yeah. forcing anything, and I, I respect him too. Um, another person I see really standing out is um, Austin Keys. He uh, he he's another freak of nature. Like he's, yeah. I've never seen a linebacker that big and can move <laughs> like that. He does everything. Um, yeah, man, th- those people really stand out to me. All the guys you're listing are also really great character guys too, and that seems to be a theme. And it's been a priority for this coaching staff, I know, in recruiting. So it's also a testament to what they saw in you. 
what would you say about yourself right now? And I, I think it'll be interesting maybe in a year after you get a full season under your belt. But for fans that don't know a lot about you right now and for you coming in, you know, ready to take on the college world, what would you tell fans about the type of player that Auburn is getting in you? Um, I would tell them a playmaker. Uh, yeah. Like for sure, like uh, definitely a playmaker and everything from the run game and the pass game. Like, um, uh, you know, right now I'm probably making a little freshman mistakes. You know, my coach talked to me about that, but uh, playmaking wise, like he said, I got it. Um, you know, I'm always gonna go out there and compete for sure. Effort always on 100. You know what I mean? Like I can control that at all times. So I'll always give maximum effort. But I would definitely say a big time playmaker. And I feel like that's what the team was lacking, like in certain areas, you know. Um, and we have a lot of them. A lot of the freshman class that came in, and a lot of older people have gotten a lot better, from what I can tell. Awesome. Well, I just have one more for you, and then if if Jay has one, but I'm just curious about this. So you're an early enrollee. Are you going to prom? <laughs> uh, no, nah, I don't. I don't think I am. I think oh. we have the option to. Um, I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm. I I ain't too interested in it. Um, okay. I'm going to graduation. I think that was my other kinda, question. It's kind of tough because the if I went to prom, I would probably go to prom in Arkansas, like the prom, like, right? At my school. But my graduation at I am is at IMG, and I think it's in the same weekend. No so, like, way. Yeah. Okay. You choose graduation and prom. Yeah, my mom yeah, said she wants to see me walk across the I stage, get so. that. Yeah, well, TJ, you're not you, missing you anything, right. TJ. Yeah, you're all right, man. You're all right. You know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I ain't tripping on it too hard. I ain't man. tripping on it too hard. But mm -hmm. the season is fast approaching. Summer will be here before you know it. You look up, training camp is here, and you guys going to be sweating. You haven't seen heat yet that you're going to see in August. But when you guys get ready to lace it up, man, uh, what's the one thing you're looking forward to the most? Is it Tiger Walk? Is it you got you well, y'all don't get a chance to roll the tree because they're doing that by the time we don't won the game. It's before you even get off the field, it's rolled. Is it Tiger Walk? Is it playing in front of 90,000, the fourth quarter and a night game and our Jordan Hair? Which, which one is it? Uh for me, I would say definitely playing in Jordan Hair. Like, um, I, I experienced the Iron Bowl in the Georgia game. I mean, those those are environments that, yeah. that uh, yeah, I want to play in that. Um, and then another thing is the Iron Bowl. I'm I'm looking forward to the Iron Bowl big time. Um, I want to play against Nick Saban so bad. Um, <laughs> he I've missed that one. Play, I've always wanted to play against him. I respect him as a head coach like tremendously. Um, but I've just, I've just always wanted to play against him. Um, and then just uh, seeing how I measure up. To everybody in the SEC in your know, first year, you know, I think it'll be really good. So, but you know, only time could tell. So, yeah. Well, hey, you're doing all the things right to get started off on the right foot and uh, a, a very impressive guy beyond just a football player. So, TJ, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us. So good getting to know you a little bit better and excited for what's to come for you on the plane. So, best of luck with everything. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, appreciate you, man. See you at practice on uh, Thursday and call your game on Saturday, man. So have fun. You're always a class act, great character. We need about 50 more guys like you, man. We'll be <laughs> like where we need to be. Yeah. Agreed.